Hello and welcome to the Real Estate Regroup Show. I am your host, LJ Walker, a real estate investor helping you realize your dreams of owning a home or investing in one. So I'm turning the tables. We're going to do a, sort of a case study, if you will, on a current event. One event that actually is bothering me, okay, is the fact that 215 dead bodies was found behind a jail down in Jackson, well, near Jackson, Mississippi. Apparently, from what has been discovered, the inmates were the ones that dug the ground up and buried the deceased. Most of the deceased were, well, actually, none of the deceased were embalmed. So there's a stench in the air, and they say that there's buzzards flying around on top. Investigations are still going on as far as, you know, like, why is there so much secrecy? But the way it was found out is that there was one particular incident where a man was fatally hurt by another police officer and their family, his family, was all over social media doing their best to get the word out saying that uh, their son, their grandson was missing. And when things were discovered, it was discovered that he was buried with his ID on him in this particular unmarked grave. And that's when it was discovered that it wasn't his body alone down there. It was 215 others. I don't believe all of them were done at the same time, meaning in the same year. As a matter of fact, they found another man, and I believe it was either last year or the year before last, a uh, white man they have found uh, that was buried down there as well. So it's really not clear if all of them died at the hands of the police. I wouldn't be shocked. Um, I also understand that for the families that did discover some of them, uh, many of them, their uh, relative that was buried uh, buried down there may have suffered from a drug overdose because they were addicted to drugs. Uh, not everybody, but again, some people, right? So I'm like, wow, this is really, 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 <laughs> this is really, really profound. Investigation is still going on to figure out, okay, you know, what exactly happened? Why did it happen? Um, and then also with me, I'm trying to understand how is it that the local representatives never questioned anything? Because if there is a smell coming from somewhere, uh, one of the first things I know that I ask is, well, where is this smell coming from? Why is there a smell here? And then the buzzards didn't, you know, say something to somebody. I'm wondering, do the local representatives that represent that area, do they live in that area? Because I don't understand how you could live there and not smell the stench or not be aware of your own district that you quote unquote work for. I'm just shocked that with all these people that nobody said anything, nobody reported anything. It's, it's really, uh, really upsetting and it's disturbing. I wanted to bring or circle this back to say, you know, there's a lot of people who especially from the big cities like New York, L.A., Chicago, who want to move down to places like Jackson, Mississippi. Jackson has, for those of you who don't know, they do have a lot of jobs. Uh, they do have a lot of amenities, uh, but they quote unquote, um, if you look at their quote unquote statistics, when you compare them to these other cities that I mentioned, their crime is supposed to be lower. 
their police brutality is supposed to be lower, uh, particularly if you go to like sites like spotcrime.com or worldpopulationreview.com. But what I'm noticing, and I'm not the only one that notices this, is that a lot of times the crimes in these other smaller cities that they don't get reported at all. For some reason, New York, LA, and Chicago will make world news, but what happens in places like Mississippi does not. And I'm not really sure why that is. As a matter of fact, if it wasn't for social media, I don't believe that mainstream media would have even picked it up. They probably would have ignored it and not say much because honestly, even if you do a search right now, you will see that more and more, and it's like, it's not even like big name social media platforms. It's the little guys that are saying something. And that's something that I noticed. Like when I go to different places, I like to go on YouTube and I like to hear what local people are saying. Um, because in New York, we don't even get that kind of news like on our on our news channel. It doesn't even mention it at all. And you don't know a lot of times until you get there what's going on if you look at the local news. And even still, <laughs> the local news, you know, you got to be careful and use some discernment if you even have any because discernment really is not something everybody is blessed with a lot of people throw that word around like everybody got it no you might have it but somebody else might not you know but you do have to this is what i got to say to you especially those of you who like to travel um and also for those of you who are looking to move just be aware of all your surroundings Never get too comfortable anywhere. Even if they say to you a place, oh, it's safe. You don't have to worry about nothing. I did. I made that mistake a long time ago. And thank God he spared my life. I had went to Paris over, it's been over 30 years since I've been there. And everyone was saying, oh, you're going to love it. Oh, you don't have to worry about nothing. Oh, you, you're this, that, and the third. And I got mugged when I got, got over there. So listen, all never relax, never completely relax. That is always be aware of your surroundings. Always be cautious and always be careful, especially when you're traveling alone. Okay. And then definitely for those of you who want to move, I know, I know I've met some people who just got up and moved, didn't do no research, didn't do no anything. You know, honestly, I don't think that's the wisest thing to do. I really think you should visit a place more than once before you make that move. And nowadays, there it is a little bit easier in the sense that you have meetup groups in different places. You can go and meet up with one of those groups and see... You know, speak to people, speak to the locals there and find out from their, them, you know, what type of city this is, what type of area it is. Are there any areas I should avoid? Uh, what, you know, what is the, some of the best neighborhoods in that particular city or town? You know, and then I mentioned to you, but guys, before, there's normally a local real estate investment association club just about everywhere that meets once a month. Some places will be free. Some places will charge you $20. You can always write that off on your taxes, so don't even worry about it, okay? But yeah, a lot of crime, unfortunately, is not reported. And you do need to follow social media. Yes, you know, some people are going to exaggerate more than others, uh, but always look at, I would say, try to look at more than one video to ascertain uh, where you need to go and what you need to do. And you know what? You can also, when you're looking at the video, 
you can ask the question in the comment section and sometimes these YouTubers, most of the time, they will respond back to you, you know, without you even having to fly out there without driving, taking the train, etc. Save yourself some cash and do as much research as you can at home before you make that final leap. But really don't think honestly that you can escape crime. Crime is everywhere. It's just that some people hide it better than others. That's, that's really what I'm come to the conclusion. Now, once you also, another thing to do, once you do visit that place, right? Let's say you did all your home research and you decide to visit that place. I would still speak to police officers to get an idea. Okay. And then after speaking to police officers, after going to the meetup clubs and the real estate investor associations, um, another good, most underlooked resource are the taxi drivers, those Uber drivers, those Lyft drivers. Yes. Speak to them, talk to them, you know, find out if they're originally from there or if they're originally from somewhere else. Find out how long, if they are from somewhere else, find out how long they've been in there by, you know, living in that particular city, state, etc. Find out why they moved, uh, you know, ask all of the questions that you need to ask them. Ask them, you know, what areas to avoid and things like that. Okay. And tip them well. Because they will take care of you. They will give you information and answer questions that you don't even know to ask when you get down there. Okay. And then my other tip that I have is when I heard that some of the people may have died from a drug overdose, according to, I believe it was uh, the coroner that discovered that with some of them. Listen, I have to let you know that police, the uh, ambulance workers, and a lot of those people, the hospitals, and a lot of them, believe it or not, they are, they don't have too much empathy for people who are on drugs. If a person overdoses or has a seizure or whatever like that, they're like good riddance. Because many of them, I think, especially now, being that, yes, COVID is over, but now we got new diseases coming in and some of them are overworked, okay? And they're tired. So I was told by uh, someone who was at one of the resource fears that we had in my area, if you see somebody on drugs and they pass out, they start spazzing out, don't tell, when you call 911, don't tell them, Oh, you think it's a crackhead or this is a crackhead. Don't say that. Say that the person is either having epileptic seizure or a heart attack or a stroke. Say something like that. Because if you say that uh, it's drug induced, a lot of times they're going to take their time rushing to the scene to correct the problem. They're they not going to come fast. And I have to admit, I did see that and I have experienced that. They, they, <laughs> it, it's unfortunate that we live in a world like this, but yes, they, they don't run. They don't come quick. But if you say that they have some, one of the other diseases that I mentioned or what, you know, then they'll come a little bit faster. Okay. And they'll treat them. Once they come faster, they'll be forced to treat them quicker as opposed to letting them stay there for a while. And sometimes they'll stay there until, you know, they won't come until the person dies. 
uh, that's another thing or or it's like extremely severe okay and and i was told this and i was like oh, i remembered cer a certain situation where wow that that did happen they did take about 40 minutes to come all right and i'm in new york city where we have plenty of people you no know? all right and then the next thing that came to my mind was who are the local politicians in that area do the local politicians live in the area because i also know that there are certain places even in new york where the local representative doesn't not only do they not live in the neighborhood they don't live in the city and they don't even live in the state you know so i'm you know i'm kind of questioning now the only the only thing is because the jail is outside just outside of jackson mississippi it's possible that they drove by and didn't say anything or it's possible that they never drove by that particular jail, the local politicians, but somebody did. Somebody in, near, near that area must have noticed a stench. And it's just hard for me. The only thing I can think of is maybe they didn't know that they should call somebody to say, hey there's a stench where's this coming from there's something going on over here in this area it's just hard for me to wrap my brain around the fact that nobody said anything before and no in order for an investigation to occur it, it, it's just it's just a little bit difficult the only thing I can think of is that maybe nobody knew. But moving forward for everyone else, I'm going to let you know. If there's any, if you smell a smell, you need to call somebody. Even if it's the sanitation department, the, de the Department of Environmental Protection Agency, there's something wrong if there is a smell your local representatives um whoever they are city council you need to you need to make a few phone calls but i would definitely call probably would call epa first um well here in new york we have a 311 which is like an information hotline i don't know i don't think it's national i know that it's local to new york city but if you have a line like that. I, I know some places it's 211. Call that number and make a report and say, excuse me, whenever I pass by this particular area, this is what's going on. And they will direct you to the proper agency to let you, you know, where you can report it so that it can be investigated. Because that, mm, yeah, that, this whole story to me is, is just sad. It's sad. But anyway, those are the tips that I have. I hope you guys learn from this. I hope you guys will watch this closely. Let's see what happens. Let's see how this story unfolds so that we can get to the bottom of this and so that this is not repeated. Okay? All right, guys. So please feel free. To share this amongst your friends, remember sharing is caring. Bye for now. Until next time, have a good night.